scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are many wealthy people today. There are people in the presidency. There are multi Bill Gates had classmates, true or false. All of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have. Love people. When you see us say, turn around, hug one another, and all of this, we are doing it for a reason. We are doing it for a reason. Everybody say opportunity. Remember my message on activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us. Cherish very valuable relationships. I'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship. No. The Bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful. That means it doesn't bear fruit. There are some relationships that bear fruit. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean the people have to be perfect. I'm not talking of love relationship now. I'm just talking of general relationship. The people may have their differences just like you have your own too. Correct? People are not working with us because we are perfect. There are some of you who hate me. It's just that you like what I represent to the body. And you are receiving it in peace. Praise the Lord. Value relationships. Write it. Write it so that even after 10 years, if you are looking at your note, you will see it. Value relationships. When you see people, greet them. Greet them. Don't say I'm a pastor of social so, so ministry. So what? Huh? Greet people. You get up in the morning, you pass people, good morning. Huh? Don't look and say, you know, when I was in, in, in SS3, that's when you were writing common interest. So what? Let me tell you, if age used to give food, some of our parents would be resting by now. Relationships. Hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear 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 number two insecurity Many poor people are insecure. The Bible says money is a defense. It says a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended. But a poor man uses entreaties, always begging, a life of begging.
greed. Many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion. Greed. What if I give? Where would the money come from again? So someone can be dying and you can join people to say, ah, you are dying. What happened? Whereas you can rush the person to the hospital. But you are saying, me too, what I have is not much. Greed. Self-centeredness. Some of the effects that financial hardship brings. Self-centeredness. Many people are self-centered. And part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency. Self-centered. They don't think about anybody, just me, myself. What I have is not much. You know if it was much, we would have shared. But now that it's more, please don't disturb me. I can pray for you. Self-centeredness. Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money. They've entered wrong relationships, wrong marriages. They have compromised, given themselves freely and cheaply. They've been involved in diabolic things, all kinds of things because of poverty. When you pay a man and say, go and kill another person and I will give you 100,000 or 200,000. That's terrible. Unrighteousness. Say in the name of Jesus, I will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things. There are many people who live perpetually under fear. Will the landlord come and kick me out? And we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like Abuja. And now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of God's economic system. Mm. Grant us light, oh God. The anatomy of God's economic system. The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery. It's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich. They have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay, lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm, but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation. And so tonight we want to examine this system. Everybody say heaven's economy. Say it again, heaven's economy. Many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church. Either because we have 
be made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity, it is carnality. But by now, I know that every one of us here hates poverty. Is that true? And we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him there is a system so why does god bless us because if you do not know why god prospers people you will misuse prosperity when it comes are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity they don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom so they get money and do lots of crazy things you know i I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat, any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the Sultan of Brunel or so, I think one of these very wealthy billionaires. Hallelujah. His child, I think if I, if I remember rightly, about 22 years old. When he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday, the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift the wealthiest man of god in africa is worth about 190 million us dollars after years of operating this world but now one son who clocked 22 years listen to me i want to challenge you tonight the father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family. Will he buy food in a restaurant? A man whose empire is built with gold. And the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht. And he brought in half of Hollywood stars. Half. Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy drink beer, waste away, become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular, one of these secular musicians. And he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man, a poor man uses entreaties. And he knew that that way would not work. So they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend. Do you think it will work? At once. At once. It worked at once. Now listen. That's a lot of money spent on vanity. And the truth is, compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabouts that his father had, that's a chicken change. That's pocket money. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system. There are, of course, any man that does not give his life to Christ, no matter what you have in this world, you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom, you must be advancing another cause. Everybody is advancing something. Whether you know it or not. Are you getting my point? So why does God bless us? Never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion. The day you forget it, God is not entitled to bless you. Please follow me. Because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict. Your violation of them will cost you so much. Number one. The role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why God blesses us. Number one. To live a comfortable life. I shared this during the Kingdom Wealth Summit in 2010. Number one, to live a comfortable life. That's one of the reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Let me say it again. God is not glorified in our poverty. Say it after me. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Say it one more time. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Now say, God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks I don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard hallelujah there's nothing wrong living a very comfortable life you sleep in peace you wake up in peace God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now, many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. I want you to believe it no matter how you have suffered. Say, it. God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it. You are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable... Let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God, one of the major reasons as a matter of fact, why God blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation, but when you are a kingdom citizen, if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion, then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom finance soul winning bless the lives of of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people 
to better the lives of people. Hallelujah. Very important. Now I wrote something here and I want you to write it. It's God's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. I'll say it again. It is God's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. This is so important. I know that there are kingdom financiers. Those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities. But can I tell you, part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom. Say amen if you believe that. So financial dominion is not a wish. I told you it's a, it's a principle. It's a path. It has a formula. If you can walk with it, then God will honor you. Otherwise, you are not entitled. As simple as that. You may not go to hell, but you are certainly not going to be eligible. It is God's plan for every believer. It's God's desire for everyone seated and hearing me. And even for the online community, it's God's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom. Listen, we are still going to discuss other sections, but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource God gives you, there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom. It's not just a special um, a, un until you are prompted and all of that, that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. That's the second reason. The third reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a practical way. To reveal the love of God. And God so loved the world that he... That you must give your love expression in this dying world. To reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way. To help the poor, to help the hungry, to be committed in charity, to be committed in community projects and nation building. All of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom. That means God's blessings is not just limited to the house of God first the house of God but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion beyond culture beyond gender and beyond social status when you come and build a school for a community for instance and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years. Teach these children, whether you know them or not. That's revealing the love of God. When there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy, you provide for the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. How do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich and maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now and he said, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, say, who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, say, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he'll say, ah, ah. You out of this abundance so let's just take this one and you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously so the bible says when you give to the poor is the same thing as god saying borrow me money i will return it to you ah i will do goodness god every rich man blesses according to his ability that means he first looks at his ability and from that revelation he will bless you so the bible says my god this is Paul speaking. 
shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance. Advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know? Listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says, when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that he can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money to build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching i want you to pay rapt attention so god blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them. According to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down. Stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down. Stewardship. This is, this, is, this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom. There are no owners of prosperity as it were. Financial prosperity. No. No. There are stewards that God commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing. The day you stop being a steward, you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom. Everybody say, I am a steward. What does it mean to be a steward? A caretaker. A caretaker. That means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy worthy enough that god can recommend you and can trust you there are some people who will never be rich no matter how much they pray and fast even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out you know why they are not trustworthy in this day and age let me tell you in this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer god is looking for distribution channels god is looking for houses men he can trust that you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it 
I'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity. Because there are many of us that until now, all we are thinking about is just ourselves. Let me make quick money. Hammer sharp sharp. Marry one lady quickly. Have children. Build a house. Enjoy my life. And go back to the village by December. And say all you suffering ones. How far? God has been faithful. If that is your mindset, forget about kingdom wealth. Forget about kingdom wealth. That you know that Lord, I'm a distribution center. Trust me. Trust me with insight. Trust me with resources. Trust me with capacity. He gave out of trust. He gave one five talent. That means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well. Then the one with two and the one with one. And after a while, his point was proven to be correct. Because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it. The one with ten multiplied it and it collected. You see, I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. Those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God in this country there are believers with houses estates and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom they are not doing anything for the kingdom only to get angry and talk fly around a church is saying we have a convention and maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom. I'm not talking about offering. Offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something. Do you have the kingdom at heart? David sat down and thought to himself. He said, how can I be in a royal palace made of gold? There is nothing I want and my God does not have a place. He said, although you, you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You do not need a house, but me, I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 14 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, Create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people, so that when you see a man that God is blessing, don't be angry. There is a price they have paid. And it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is a reorientation. When the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom. Notice I've not mentioned anything business. I've not mentioned anything money self. 
I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just buy cut every of these things and they tell people, open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh-uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus what kept your family members will not keep you there are some of us this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say lord will a savior not arise will a savior not arise is this how we will die will a savior not arise many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families the lord brings salvation for us in the name of jesus christ while they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw the, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9 want to read for the sake of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity is that in your bible that means lord i'm not just seeking all these millions and billions how many cars can you enter at once even if you have 50 cars you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars you can only enter one is that true so if it's just for yourself you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you. No matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house, I will seek your prosperity. What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and is still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrosis until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels 
the man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer and there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth that can give a prostitute 10 million for one night? Dollars. I'm not talking of Naira. And it does not shake them. All these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine. One. One wine. About maybe 10 or 20 or 50 thousand dollars. One wine. And they will order cartons of it. And believers are here begging, please. Begging. Psalm 22 verse 5. Give 22 dollars, 5 cents. All these kinds of suffering. Something is wrong. It's not, listen. We are not mocking them. But I believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen. You better believe it. I believe strongly that this generation will do something. We are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill. And they will see how we are so separated from the blessing. Are you getting blessed? Forbes 100 billionaires the top 100 people in the whole world. There are just about maybe 5 or 6 people who are professing believers. And that's the Walton family, Sam Walton and all the other people. Most of the other people are atheists, heterogeneous religions coming from wherever. Where is the church in this? Members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that. There is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, perpetual misuse of his blessings. Hosea chapter 4, verse 7. Is someone getting blessed tonight? You will thank God for this truth that you are hearing. Blessed are the ears that are hearing this. Don't trivialize it at all. Hallelujah. Everybody read, want to read. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably, listen, there are some things that are not caused by demons. It's how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything. That insatch, that insatiable lust for just everything. Money is a wild animal. It can tear you into pieces if you don't control it. That's why the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Hallelujah. People make all kinds of nasty statements. People say all kinds of things because they believe they have money. They can hire police. They can do all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you are already in, in a very great, you are a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity. 
Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Now please pay attention. We'll start talking about the laws now. We've seen why God blesses us. We want to see how he blesses us. Spiritual laws. Remember in our course curriculum, when I read it for you last week. Sorry for those who didn't come last week. We, we read out a course curriculum. Just, just follow. We're really sorry. I forgot to read it. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Even so, come Yeshua, come. And even so, come take your bride away. Take us into new realms, oh God. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord. Even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. What are the laws? There are spiritual laws, brothers and sisters, that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom. Every herbalist, look at me. If you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is, just just keep down and let's let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, My brother, in one week, where did you go to? You won't ask him what he did. You say, Where did you go to? Somehow we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, No way, leave this guy's money. This guy went somewhere. Not he did something. He went somewhere. So we, and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine. Is that true? So if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich, it tells you that there are spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Bless you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, please. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? Observe and do. There is something to do. There are laws to live by. It's not automatic. It's not the issue of receive prosperity. There is a dimension where prayer comes in. But I want you to know that there are laws. Everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Say one more time. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say spiritual laws. Oh, there are laws. There are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One to read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. 
It says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth. It is a tenth. Ten percent of your income. Please write. Ten percent of whatever blessing God br brings to your life. Now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance, money, currency. Because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not... The Bible says obedience is better than... There are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, I'm, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We're going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now, your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2 or you would have said 21 to 50 percent is your tithe. Choose anyone. If God is very meticulous and He's exact. 10 percent is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3, from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of tithing is the law of open heavens, it's the spiritual law, one of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens, not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God. Many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man. And you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people because a man is sound intellectually does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge and they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand this is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ. Being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. 
I know that there are abuses here and there, but let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty. Scripturally. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge, the serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike. Are you listening to me, please? So beware. There are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail. But the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail. Because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is the consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance. That there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three. Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify. They will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you. Of your financial prosperity. The first thing that happens. Is that many believers say. If I give. Where will I get another one? Question. How did the first one come? Your tithing. Is a proof of trust. Hallelujah. If you cannot bring out 10%. 
of your money and say, Lord, I trust you. I come because I love you and I come because I know that your word is true. If you're not a faithful tither, don't get angry at God. Many of our parents get angry. Maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor. Are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10%. They don't call it tight. But almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10% of their money and they say it's for charity. Are you following me now? If a believer plants during dry season, there is every tendency that you still suffer, although he's a believer. Is that true? If an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We are still going to continue, but while you are seated, in the next two minutes, I want you to pray and say, Lord, grace. I've not been a faithful tithe. Don't bow your head. Pray. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. There are many of us, some of you outside, wherever you are, please, this is, the, this is a serious business. Your children, this, this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, grace. Say, Kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. Cry for grace, grace, oh God. From today, I make up my mind that I will be a faithful tighter, not out of fear, not out of religion, but out of revelation. I see that this is a key. I will teach my children how to tight. I will teach my workers how to tight. 
I will teach my family members to tithe. I will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open. No power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say, Lord, I'm ready to comply. God is more than able. Before you begin to abuse God and insult him and say he's not helping my family, I'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes. Business without tithing will end up in failure. Ministry without tithing will end up in failure. A corporation without tithing, a, a non-tithing family, are, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on tithing. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him. And said, blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, they all is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that he's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the title of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million? And just go and give like that. We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. The giving grace. There are many people that do not have. If you don't have. It is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of God. And just go and drop. No. There is a grace. That was a grace that was upon the Macedonian church. That they gave even beyond their limits. It's called the giving grace. Many of us do not have it. We are too greedy. Everything that enters your hand, you spend it on every kind of thing. Sickness, disease, any other thing but God. Hallelujah. Your tithe. What is the storehouse? Very quickly, let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all. What is the storehouse? Because the Bible says, bring the tithe where? To the storehouse. The house of God. So what is the storehouse really? In scripture, there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse. Number one, God's first idea of a storehouse from the Bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Are you getting me? The place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment. For many people, is their local assemblies because, you know, they are there, they are committed, they are workers in the church, and then they are giving. Number one, the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment. Primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life. That becomes the storehouse. Number two, it could be a ministry. Not necessarily your ministry, but a ministry that is committed 
to the works of the kingdom. Please get this. A ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom. There are people, for instance, that so in, they are tied into maybe Benny Hinn ministry, Kenneth Copeland ministry, and it's not their local assembly as it were. Are you getting my point now? But it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning, building and equipping believers. Listen, if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening, it can affect your harvest. It's in the Bible. It's the same thing as a farmer carrying his seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive. The, the seed will not produce, not because it is not good, but a poor soil killed it. Number three. Now, and these ones are, they are special situations, but I'm going to talk to you. The vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual, a man of God. Listen, please. I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what I'm saying. A, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this time they don't just go maybe to redeem or kenneth copeland that vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people are you getting my condition now and they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings abraham went to who melchizedek melchizedek was not a city he was a man and he brought his tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him hallelujah There are lots of ministries, for instance, around that by the grace of God look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves. They come and they tighten koinonia here. I don't even know. This is what they are doing. Are you getting me? But I'm saying whether of these three, there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of God who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say, I qualify to be the storehouse. Come and bless. I've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse but the house of god is where you must bless is somebody getting blessed these are the benefits the first law thank you jesus wow let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night next week we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation the principle the second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase. The law of giving. Luke 6.38 Luke 6.38 Luke 6.38 Everybody say read one to read. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that he met without it shall be measured unto you again this is a spiritual law genesis 822 please when noah came out of the ark the bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals is that true that, those are the that's how the animals enter the ark seven of the unclean two of the clean so when he came out the bible says he offered two two of every animal that means he offered and finished all the clean animals how they came back is a technology we must still find out in the bible while the earth remained verse 21 21 please let's start from 21 and the lord smelled a sweet savour this was noah's sacrifice and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. 22. 
while the earth that means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains see time and harvest cold and heat god joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped but from the day they gave birth to you till today the sun still rises sets according to our perspective here there is still cold and there is winter that means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work very very important what is the law of seed time and harvest really what is it simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith i'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what i'm saying this is a very powerful law that means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah it says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of god please never give just because it's offering time and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering 
that I'm bringing for God. So that when it's offering time, you're not just looking. 100 naira, you return it. 50, you return it. 20 naira, even the 20, you return the new one and carry one. Say, Osha, please. You just dump the thing there and say, Lord, at least you. No, 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 no. Let your heart be in what you are doing. When I finish teaching you these principles, you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom. And you will see why God can punish certain people when they open their mouth, castigating blessed people in the kingdom. Are you seeing now? You see that it's not child's play. There is what you must do. It's not cheap. It's not free. Offerings in the house of God. Number two, I call them kingdom investments. Your givings for the building of the Lord's house. Kingdom investments. Every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of God. I call them kingdom investments. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project 10,000 like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say Lord I'm committing myself God is blessing me there is 50,000 coming in for me maybe 5,000 or 1,000 I'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the Lord's house this is between you and God you see Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, please and please, don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people? Satan doesn't want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be blessed. There are natural laws we are going to talk about. But your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws. Every unbeliever pastor, they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago i used to play the keyboard for a ministry a man called reverend emmanuel amechi they were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to abbas and joe and all of that now they came and they started a ministry in joss pastor i used to go and play keyboard for them listen nobody ever gave me one naira are you getting me I would trek from my house maybe sometimes after i come back from my local assembly i will go there and i'll play keyboard for them and i will play with all my heart i was responsible for my finance and everything that's the law of seed time and harvest are you getting me kingdom investment does not just mean money alone your participation every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom this is practicing the law of seed time and harvest it's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you reap where you sowed, it said you reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike. Or sometimes from my pocket and I will go there but I was doing it joyfully God is my witness I never complained once to say this man it was even my parents I were saying this 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 boy is a small boy what is all this one again but I was doing it joyfully but God was watching this is what happened to David while he was tending his fathership God was seeing him and saying I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd many of us when you see certain people you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives there was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing 
I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments. The building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop. Time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tithe of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight. It's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you. This is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruits? In scripture, the concept of first fruit, it was ordained by God, it was practiced by the Jews, it was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have registered all the members. If you drop your first fruit, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is much. You have not dropped anything. They didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen, is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is bathing compulsory? No. But not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol. is a prophetic way of honoring God and showing him, I'm sorry, that he's first in your life. Are you listening to me? First in your life. That when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to god and everything and all of that is it's not just about giving god money it's about telling god that you are first in my life are you getting the concept now so if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people say very wicked people i hate january every january is the time they eat our money no understand the spirit behind what you are doing bless you if you do not practice first fruit it doesn't mean 
that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse. To say, Sam, I'm waiting for your first fruit. If by next week, you don't bring it upon this altar, I will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. Please, don't let anybody confuse you. There are many people there are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious. They say, I saw a vision. A curse was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit, they were affected and everybody just runs around and says, carry and give him, please. Just give him less rest. Everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll just leave it there. So first fruit is very important. As you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving, you see, that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people, their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I will talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know, men who communicated the counsel of God, be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that, because they ministered in the house of God perpetually. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things, other secular activities. Things have changed now. But they did not have that opportunity. Are you following me now? And so there were ordinances from God that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God. A true man of God to go and meet him just empty handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God. You don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael, listen, they wanted to, go, they were looking for, this was, um, this was, um, Heze, was it Hezekiah now? I believe. Whoever it was, the king. Praise God. <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying, shall I recover from this disease? The king told the man, don't go and meet a man of God empty handed. He said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor. Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac to enter, um, Isaac to now bless his sons. Is that true? The Bible says he told his son, go and make me venison. Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty-handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of God. First Samuel 9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then. We'll wrap up for for today first samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13 this was the encounter and the asses of kish saul's father were lost so something was lost 
they needed a breakthrough in their life please listen i want to teach you a powerful principle there is still the law of seed faith we are coming there but i want to teach you one very powerful principle and they were lost so they needed a miracle and he said to saul his son take now one of the servants with you arise and go and look for the asses verse 4 and he passed through the mount ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that but they did not find it verse 5 and when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, All that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. And he said, let's go back. Our father will be worried. He said, no. In this city, there is a man of God. There is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem. He said, let's go and meet him. The word of the Lord comes to, to pass in his life. He said, peradventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. I want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient and that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings then said Saul to his servant but behold if we go what shall we bring to the man are you seeing now they knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty handed to say we have come to meet you and, and all of that he said for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God what have we verse verse 8 now and the servant answered saul again and said behold i have here a ha in at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that i will give the man of god to tell us our way are you following me and so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called saul an anointed saul are you getting what i'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of god with honor knowing listen knowing that god can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today in our day is the concept of prophet offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet's offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you they'll say mr man hold your 30,000. There are even those who have put their bill. They have suffered enough. They said, look, I won't be foolish again. Prophecy, 30,000. This and that and that. And it's working for certain people. They may not be necessarily fake, but I think it's inaccurate. Are you getting my point? Money and anointing does not mix together. People are supposed to do things out of revelation. However, on your own part, I never go and meet a man of God higher than me without. Nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not threatening you and say start packing god has blessed me god doesn't owe me anything at all are you getting my point now so don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people no no my blessing is not tied to you my blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles imagine if god if i was totally dependent on you for my blessing i would have died by now <laughs> ah yeah yeah but god is faithful praise the lord do you believe what i'm sharing with you i will never go and meet a man of god higher than me even if he's just to greet even if he comes into a city there are men that i hear that just came into zaria for a program i'm not even related i'll package something maybe a tie or wine or something i'll say quickly take it to that man of god just tell them i went to i, I want to greet them 
or sometimes I can just put recharge card quickly one five or something is the law of honor I've taught you this commanding results is the law of honor if you've been doing it stop it many of us on your way to go and see a man of god you branch a a, a restaurant chicken republic you blow five thousand there you finish eating and you belch you say hey by now let's just go and see him and you get up and come and you even sit down sir things are not changing you say god will bless us and you know i'm not talking of me it is very bad it's dishonoring very dishonoring so while on one side we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift it means the anointing will not flow he will not bless you that's erroneous but let me encourage you i want to encourage you have it as a spiritual culture beyond koinonia you will provoke lots of things there are places i go to minister and i tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me i find out that there are unusual open heavens even certain things that i don't want to share i find myself sharing it a seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people he said honor your father and your mother it's a law honor people hallelujah praise the lord many of you have never blessed a man of god see i say this is just because i have to teach you you don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night i've said it and said it some of you don't even know our birthdays you don't even know my birthday to say kai this person is doing all of this some of you try to call and i caught the call and for one hour you're just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering you know this very unemotional attitude there are many families like that they gather their whole family we are coming for deliverance we are coming for this and the man just comes where do i sit down and they sit down the wife too sits down demons are disturbing us in this house we had that uh, is it the deliverance ministry or what is it and you know they are talking it's very wrong very wrong no man honor the man of god in scripture and did not have anything you are not buying the miracle but i'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings when jacob brought the venison for isaac when he took off the venison it provoked a blessing from within him hallelujah i've shared with you my story on how i packaged a very dangerous seed and i left to canaan land hallelujah i went to go and honor god's servant here i didn't get to meet with him but i still went to practice that law of honor and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater when i came out from there praise god when i came out from there i was to enter the car and the holy ghost told me come out and i came out he said kneel down i laid my hands there he said from today every city you go the heavens will be open to you the same way you are seeing it here so when you see a reproduction of certain things understand that there are laws that work there are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed they just look how are these people doing it these guys they must be fetish that's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves you were not there when we were praying the price but you now see the reward and begin to criticize are you getting what i'm saying there are spiritual laws there are spiritual laws one of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life there are bosses here you know sometimes people ask me they say why do you spend so much money on bosses you don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses chairs outside and the rest sometimes i come and i rebuke the protocol people and i tell them why are there some people standing go and get more chairs hallelujah and they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more i say still go and get it it's the law of honor that i'm a man i don't know what grace you carry it's everybody sitting here you are a bank of grace it's a privilege that i'm standing here ministering to you i will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something many of you are product of different anointings some people have spoken certain blessings into your life as a ministry we are humble enough to tap into it and we tap into it by sowing into your life are you listening to me when we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry 
we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments, and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh, no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there and they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence, but when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not... See, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you are sleeping, we are awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things. You should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life. That everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there. Practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. Pastor, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, this is not fair. When I went to that city where they kept me, I was going to ask the people and say, please, where is... A very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam, bam, bam. she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen i'm trying to communicate a point she brought this whole thing and i just sat down i greeted her she didn't even answer dropped everything and then she sped out I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with lacassera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take lacassera. Listen, I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him. You will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt, I took it, I gave thanks and honestly I was not offended. Praise God. The next day nothing, there was no breakfast, they didn't ask whether I'm fasting or I want to eat. Later they just came, they said we have come. The car, they carried me, they chartered one car, at least do something presentable. Are you getting my point? It was hot, it was horrible, I was humiliated. I said, goodness, what is this, oh God? I said, well Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm. I went and it was a great meeting. God blessed all the people. I paid my flight ticket from here to the place and I did everything. When I finished, by afternoon, they brought okra soup for me and something, you know, they just came and dropped it. You know this, this, um, this cooler, this one, that, this small one, that's what they just came and dropped. And we have three or four pure water or something. I said, what is this? I'm not exaggerating. It was a humiliating experience and I spent three days there. On the third day when I was done, I was happy, I laughed. Do you know what happened? I, I want to tell you the pain 
of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things. Don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic. Praise the Lord. After this, we'll rise up and pray. This is what happened. And when I got, when I finished everything, the people came, they were all pinching themselves. I told them, please, I need to catch my flight. I, I had misery. I wanted to come back fast. Hallelujah. And then when it was time, the president just came. The envelope that they put the honorarium, you will know that it was not organized. One, you know envelope that they've written something, then you just strike it. I'm serious. And he carried it and packaged. It was not up to even half of my flight ticket. He just brought it and said, sorry, you know that we are, we are starting, we are managing and all of that. And I just blessed him blessed everything and sold it back into them not because i was angry imagine if i had left everything and i came by faith are you getting me now that i came by faith and say i'm going to bless these people some of you do not know the pain there are many men of god that are bleeding there are many people that are punishing themselves investing in the house of god you forget that these people have lives are you getting my point now while you are sleeping, they are praying for. It's a different thing if they are not serious. But where you see a man that is committed to your spiritual development, let me tell you, you rob yourself of certain dimensions if you do not bless them. Again, if you don't believe this, there is no problem. But I'm teaching you a very powerful principle. I always seek to give and not to take. This is why you see certain people entering some strange order of blessings. It works. Never invite a man of God you are not ready to honor his grace. If you don't have the means, be patient. Don't come and humiliate a man. A man has a wife. He has children. He must pay the school fees of those people. He's commit. This is why a lot of men of God get into all kinds of manipulation because of the pain they are going through. The, he now comes back home and the wife is saying, honey, well done. No, three days, I missed you. How far? No, nothing for the super. The man says, man, God was glorified. The wife said, okay, so where will we be glorified now? We have glorified God. Hallelujah. Prophet's offering is real. It exists. Next week, we'll take it up from there. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray and say, Lord, thank you for your word. Our time is fast, Ben. Just bless the Lord. Tell him, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you for your word, the law of tithing, your giving, your offerings, your kingdom investments, the honor that you bring to the vessels that God blesses you with. Pray and say, Lord, the giving grace. Lift your voice and pray. The giving grace. Let it mantle me right now. The giving grace. That grace to give that grace to give, the grace to tithe, the grace to sow, the grace to commit myself in your house. Go ahead and pray. When you pray that prayer, no power in existence will stop you. I'm telling you, you're on your way to financial dominion. Pray. Yes, Lord, thank you. Many of you, is a mind shift that has happened to you tonight. I know our time is far spent, but it's worth it because what you have received now, no man can take away from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, if you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord, we've spoken about the law of honor. The greatest honor you can give God is to give him back the life that he gave you. There are many of us that are here. We are living our lives by ourselves and for ourselves. The Bible says, if your hope is just in this earth alone, you are of all men most miserable. There are people who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ, inside and outside. There are others who have made a decision, but honestly, you found yourself derailing. The teaching on dominion, financial dominion, will only profit you if you are connected to Jesus Christ. So right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you've given your heart to the Lord but you found yourself derailing. 
I don't care whether you are a Christian or you are a pastor. You are saying, Lord, tonight, I want to make it right with you. Please leave your seat and come here right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Leave your seat and come. Leave your seat and come. Leave your seat and come. Don't wait for anybody. I believe that there are people the Holy Ghost is talking to. Please, we're out of time. Keep coming inside and outside. Don't be afraid. If the Holy Ghost convicts you, please come very quickly. Very quickly. If there are people that the Lord is speaking to, you've never given your heart to the Lord or you found yourself derailing. There is nothing to be ashamed of. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Celebrate them. They are coming. I believe there are still a few people outside. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Keep coming. As many as are coming, just let them come. Please pray with me very quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you from the depths of my heart. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive cleansing and remission of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I'm saved in Jesus' name. Father, preserve these ones. Preserve them and make them mighty men. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please quickly just follow the ushers. They will have your details and they will meet you. Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.